Hello, welcome to the Cambridge Service Alliance webinar series. Today it is my pleasure to introduce a colleague, uh, Florian Olmerson, and he's going to present business ecosystem towards a classification model. Over to Florian. Hello and good afternoon everyone and um, good morning to the other parts in the world and good evening to the other parts in the world. Today we're going to be discussing business ecosystems. This is one of the work streams within the Cambridge Service Alliance um, that we are looking after and uh, or that I'm looking after specifically as a researcher. And um, this is an outcome that we've um, we've had from um, a community of interest meeting um, a couple of um, yeah a couple of um, months ago. And um, what we've done was basically we've we've tried to unpack business ecosystems. I'm going to go into the definition of that in a moment, and then. Uh, we looked at the B2B relationships within these business ecosystems. And we've tried to classify and um, yeah, kind of describe a little bit more um, how we actually design these and how we actually define design for um, these business ecosystems in the first place. So um, first of all, I'm going to talk about business ecosystems and value exchange. Then I'm going to give a little bit of theoretical background. It's more an academic part, but um, I just um, didn't want to lose that part. And um, Then I'm going to talk very briefly on how we actually got to this, hence that you get a feeling of um, yeah, what was needed and what was involved to actually find this, this classification model in the first place. Then I'm going to talk about the classification model and I'm going to give a summary. So why business ecosystems in the first place? So modern service delivery is often done um, with multiple companies. So um, where um, a complex service usually involves having, um, yeah, having multiple firms um, to kind of slot in capability to um, have a specific outcome. One of the examples that I always take is uh, the um, um, a case by BA Systems where they um, service aircrafts um, um, for training flights of um, airplane pilots and um, the servicing in, in the first place, place gets charged to the customer as an uptime. Hence, it's, a, it's, um, it's actually a um, solution that's being sold to the customer. But this means as well that there's, of course, uh, multiple companies involved, hence a specialist company for the radar and a specialist company um, for the, the jet engines of the airplanes or then um, of the, the servicing of the airplane in the first place, just as an example. So, this this capability of actually selling this uptime of the airplane could not actually be happening without the the multiple companies basically coming together and delivering the service together. So um, so this value in its, in the first place that actually gets delivered from this ecosystem normally actually should bring more to the customer than a single entity within this business ecosystem, hence with these multiple um, firms working together, could be delivering by themselves. Because otherwise, of course, you wouldn't actually be um, using multiple companies, but you would just be using one company to deliver the service. And then, like when we're discussing ecosystems in the first place, we normally talk about um, the maturity and the timeline. Hence, um, there's always a, um, when, you, when you discuss this with your colleagues, there's always a question on, synchronizing the, within the discussion if you're actually talking about a new ecosystem hence something that is to be defined or designed are you talking to enhance an existing hence there is a there is a um, an existing ecosystem already or are you talking about a five-year plan from now on hence the future of an ecosystem in the first place so what is it that you're actually discussing something that exists at this moment and is mature and is working or are you discussing something which uh, may be working in the future um, so yeah, this this is kind of a um, uh, yeah one part of this. So this is um, like kind of a kind of artificial map that usually I'm, um, I'm I use to kind of explain what a business ecosystem does in the first place. And you see that there's core partners, so so there's suppliers and partners uh, with the blue company in the middle, and then there's some form of partner, and then there's an end customer. So um, there may be competitors as well, and there may be influencers. The influencers and the competitors may actually have some form of value exchange with the, uh, with the ecosystem in the first place. But we're really looking at this core partnership for, for this exercise um, of this ecosystem in the first place. So hence we look um, at, um, at any time, we basically look at the value exchange between two of these partners. And we basically turn around and say, how can we actually, like, kind of, how can we say, how can we define what's actually going on in between these two partners? 
And first of all, within the um, within the study or within the research, we've we've started to define and say um, there's obviously a contract at the baseline or at the basis of this partnership in the first place, which is usually correct. But um, when we talk about contracts, and then very quickly it gets very diverse and very complicated as well. The needs for different um, companies involved, so for for different partners within an ecosystem, are very very different. So the base, um, the base contracting relationship or the, the base needs for an organization and the basic def definition of contract within a company, uh, is ten they tend to be very wide and very, very different. So what we've said is we're going to reduce this down to the value exchange, which uh, made the discussion and as well the definition and the managerial handling of this um, a little bit easier. So we actually started to discuss the content of the value exchange in the first place. So hence, what do companies actually get paid for in the first place? So what is it that they give in capability and that they receive money for in the return? So then, um, of course, we've, uh, we've given some form of um, theoretical background, um, as, as I mentioned earlier. So we've, um, there's something which is called the resource dependency perspective. That means that companies, in a wider sense, um, basically have a dependency on each other and um, without um, this this resource dependency there would not be actually a firm in the first place so hence a company or a firm always needs external in a wider sense stakeholders hence partners suppliers customers hr relationships and so on and so on and these relationships basically make up this entity the firm in the first place so um then we've, do, um, we've got definitions about business ecosystems are defined as networks of organizations and individuals that collaborate to evolve, evolve roles and capabilities as well as synchronizing with their investment to build value and increase efficiency. So there's a couple of key words in there, increase efficiency, build value um, and synchronizing um, their capabilities. So um, we, we refer to this here as getting your ducks in line and actually make them all jump at the same time. This is kind of the, the, the baseline of this um, from an, from an um, organization and from a, from a managerial point of view. So we found that there's actually not very much understanding of this, what's going on in this, in the academic literature, but then as well in the, um, in the literature that we, we've, we found from, um, from consulting organizations and other firms. So with this, actually, with this discussion or with this, uh, with this point here that we're, we're with this, with this work that we've done, we would obviously like to contribute to this, and we would like to, um, yeah, we would like to contribute this this um, classification model in the first place. So the research question that has been guiding us is how do companies organize their value exchange within ecosystems? So how do they actually value exchange within this wider ecosystem in the first place? So what we started with, as a, um, so you get a feel for what we've actually done in the first place, we've done a literature review, so we looked at 70 odd papers and we've um, kind of read through them and kind of tried to find how um, we as academics, but then as well, um, um, like kind of other organizations, uh, kind of consulting um, um, point of views and so on, actually qualify and, um, and understand this, this value exchange in the first place. Then we've done some focused interviews, as an open ended interviews, we've tried to understand how different um, different business ecosystems work in the first place and we had a first workshop where we actually were discussing uh, b2b ecosystem collaboration in the first place um, so you may be aware that there's a um, um, that there's a, an executive briefing note out as well as a different uh, webinar out um, on b2b collaboration and how to build this in the first place um, and then we've um, we've done another um, um, verification round where we basically um, worked around this and during this b2b um, ecosystem collaboration workshop there was really the the intention to kind of find out and work a little bit more around these these single entities pretty much and then we had another two-day workshop after we've uh, we've done some um, uh, some interviews um, where we basically tried to uh, to really discuss this this exchange of different organizations we've ex actually managed to extend this um, this is an, originally there was four different levels, and now there's, there's, there's five different levels. So um, yeah, with the help of the partners, um, we've 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 basically been extending this, and we've um, we've been managing to um, yeah to get this defined. So what are we talking about in the first place? So I've uh, um, what we've done is basically we've we've drawn a, um, an example of how multiple of these links would actually look in the first place. And then we've we've given a, um, a brief, 
yeah, kind of indication of what this would look like um, underneath this. So this is not a model of um, you would wish as a firm to actually arrive at five within a collaboration. And this is not a model where um, you're potentially very weak if you're at level one or um, you're kind of mediumly good if you're at level three. This is only an indication of how you may organize the value exchange between multiple organizations to actually fulfill a contract. And of course, if you're thinking about more complex business ecosystems, so taking, for example, a harbor where, there, where there's very, very many different organizations working together, you may even have multiple of these, um, these, um, um, uh, these connections or um, um, yeah, these connection types within one uh, business ecosystem. But the aim is really to, um, to give you as practitioners um, kind of a guideline and say, have a think about what you're doing, why you're doing it, and um, why, like kind of enabling you as well to maybe argue and say, why are you not doing this different? Or um, enabling you to give your arguments why you should be doing things different in the first place. So as a first, um, we on the left-hand side, we have the commodity supply. This is really um, like kind of what we define as nuts and bolts supply. And of course, everybody has suppliers that um, supply pens, office material, and so on. And so on. so um, we've taken one example in, um, in the paper that we've published um, through the Service Alliance, um, which was um, the occurrence of um, the harbor in Portsmouth. So BA Systems manages this, uh, this, relative, uh, this very complex um, entity for the government. So they manage this harbor, and in this harbor, there's two entities that, um, su that are commodity supply entities. So hence, they don't really have a value exchange. So they don't receive from the ecosystem a larger feedback, but they only supply into, so they supply some form of value into the, um, um, into the, um, into the harbor. And this is one is a convenience store and the other one is a, is a, is a barber. So the barber is obviously there to cut hair or, um, to trim beards, um, and then the, um, the, the the convenience store is a very like kind of a very normal convenience store with a little bit of an induction to a harbor um, community in the first place. Hence, they have um, security um, uh, vests or t-shirts and and um, supply a couple of things that you may need as a sailor when you're coming actually from a from a longer longer exercise in the first place. So the value flow, as in this, the supply of what what you actually give to the to um, um, to this ecosystem, is one directional. Hence, they only they only sell into or they cut hair, and then afterwards um, this um, this is done and finished, and then the next um, next commodity supply may may start. Then number two would be a bidirectional supply of of value. So um, what we looked at was. Um, um, for example, in a um, research and development relationship, um, you may have a sensor company within uh, within your 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 firms that supply you. And if you do research and development, you may be turning around saying, "Well, actually, we don't want to just you supply us a, a sensor. We would like to develop a sensor with you that is um, of higher quality or has very specific, um, um, yeah." solves a very specific job that we want to wanted to do hence you may actually like have, have a lot of communication for a s specific period of time or you maybe actually have a any form of bi-directional relationship in the first place this is obviously the same if you're um, if you're building a road um, with a external company or um, an external company um, needs a lot of requirements to go into the processes which they're managing in the first place. And of course, your, your firm, your entity, um, or the contract holder may have multiple of these, um, of these bidirectional value exchanges and maybe managing and scheduling these different companies. So hence, there may be one or multiple entities or even a complete office to manage these relationships to multiple firms in the first place. As a third option, we've got the multi-directional. Um, so where it's really needed that the communication takes so much intensity that you don't actually want to organize the, the communication anymore in a way that you say, um, um, we don't want to actually have the, um, 
we don't want to manage this communication anymore. We want the different entities to manage communication in between each other. So um, there's there, there's multiple examples um, where 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 firms come together, and this um, this is the case. So, but the important part is that these companies actually still stay their single entities, and they still stay um, within their their boundaries as a as a firm in the first place. So people don't get co-located. There's no need for um, a co-location, but there may be um, town hall meetings um, or or larger meetings where people come together and actually um, and synchronize on on what's happening or what how um, how things are progressing. So this is then a multi-directional value exchange. Hence, the the all organizations involved involved within this ecosystem actually have some form of connect, um, conversation channels to each other, and actually know about each other and know um, and have a synchronization point or a communication point. And of course, and then this value gets delivered again by the end of it um, to the customer. And this may be multiple firms um, working together. Um, um, and delivering separately to the customer, or then, as it's depicted in the picture, um, they may be delivering through one entity um, that is maybe potentially the contract holder. So an example of that would be, um, again, what we've been discussing earlier, um, um, when multiple companies actually work together and and deliver an, the servicing of an aircraft, then um, multiple firms may have to communicate with each other um, to actually get the work done together, hence there may be specifications um, across different capability where the communication needs to be um, between the companies. Then the first fourth level is the new entity, and this is um, um, this is specifically where where companies don't actually turn around and say we want to actually stay our single entity or single company and stay within our single entity um, um, with our single boundaries within our company, but we would like to co-locate parts of this operation of this ecosystem or um, the full of the ecosystem um, um, on one in one entity in one new founded um, um, new founded entity. But this means still that all the companies that are involved basically, even that they're co-located, they still in brackets wear their own badge and and um, yeah belong to this uh, to their in brackets, home companies, so to say. So, but this is obviously, um, of course, this brings a, um, a large plus when it comes to communication and 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 um, overheads in communication or overheads then in um, in value exchange in the first place. Things can be quicker organized. Um, the proximity between the partners is very close. The um, there may be um, shared infrastructure, hence um, storage places, um, IT storage places, for example, may be shared. Um, but um, yeah, like um, as was um, said earlier, um, the, the the firm still the, the 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 employees of the firm still stay within their um, home company, so to say. So this may be just an office building, or this may be a um, this may be a um, yeah maybe like kind of a whole uh, production place or a, um, or a, a production place where where everyone kind of comes together in the first place. Then the fifth example is a legal entity. So this would mean, this of course needs a lot more prior work, but um, this means that all the companies involved within the, um, within the ecosystems or a subset of the companies involved within the ecosystem actually found a new legal entity and actually invest into this entity. This means, or potentially means, that all the employees who are involved in this, um, in this entity um, are actually seconding their members of staff into this new legal entity. And so they don't only work in the same office space or um, potentially have a, a single office or um, a couple of offices at, at a site, but they actually form a new brand and a new, um, a complete new structure. So this may then involve as well the customer and um, this may be a, a co-ownership, so to say, with the end customer or with um, with different legal entities, and as well maybe having co investors in there um, um, or yeah, different different capability coming in. So of course, this um, like I, like I indicated earlier, it doesn't mean that five is always the answer. So uh, building a new legal entity may not always be the answer because um, depending on timeline and and um, and needs of the 
different organizations or the, the amount of risk that is involved, um, it may be far better to, um, to actually manage um, the value exchange far much more closer, hence the, number, the bi bi-directional uh, relationship may be actually far better to, to execute or operationalize um, a um, value exchange within an ecosystem. So these are really, in, in short, the, the five different options that there are. So summarizing a little bit um, and, and concluding, uh, the unit of analysis of the dependencies of the ecosystems is the operational connections within the B2B relationship. That means we've actually only talked about this um, single connection between two of the companies and how you may actually um, organize that in the first place. Hence, I said, Earlier, um, I said earlier that uh, within a business ecosystem, you might may find multiple of these um, of these five different different connections. Um, the resource dependency perspective has been used and be, to, be defining the companies, um, and we found this as suitable. So, if you want to um, want to have more in, um, information on this, um, there's reference right next to it. It's a lovely book to read. Um, um, a categorization has been split into five parts. So, like as I said earlier in the beginning, we had four parts, and then we've actually um, extended it to five parts. So, the commodity supply, the bidirectional, the multidirectional, the new new entity, and new legal entity um, have been the ones that we could identify at this very moment. The classification shows that there are different types of connect, um, ecosystems connections in the first place, and um, as well in discussions later on with with practitioners. Um, usually, um, just discussing this with practitioners um, was a little bit of an eye opener for some to actually um, have far much more of a strategic intent behind building these connections in the first place. Um, the difference in the um, proximity of the companies involved in the ecosystem, but as well the components needs for the implementation of the functioning ecosystem. So, whichever one you choose, there is an impact on the proximity, but as well on the strategic intent between the two companies. And um, as well on the cap how the capabilities shared, how the overhead um, of, of communication, for example, may be handled, um, and so on and so on. So um, we are hoping that this, of course, helps you as practitioners um, within your uh, business ecosystems and helps you to, to def define a little bit better um, how you're actually working with other businesses.